For a while now I've been thinking about better ways of telling the story and having to find a good way to film myself. So I figured, you know what, I'll get a drone. So I've spent weeks and weeks researching drones and checking out prices. And after a couple of weeks, I finally found a drone I was looking for. So while I waited for my drone to arrive, I went and researched a little bit more into what I need in order to fly this drone. I came across the Civil Aviation Authority and I found that I needed to pass a test to get my flyer and my operator ID. I passed both of these things quite easily and my drone arrived. Only one problem was, I'd ordered the wrong drone. I thought I'd ordered the Fly More kit for this drone. When I looked on the eBay listing, it was pretty misleading. So within 10 minutes of receiving this item and opening the box, I was on eBay messaging the seller trying to rectify this issue. When I messaged him, I got an out of office reply. It seemed a bit too much of a stock answer and he started to make me worry about what I'd actually bought. Are these people actually for real? It looked like I'd bought the drone from a retailer rather than an independent seller. Having looked through some of the reviews, I started to worry that I'd made a bad choice. So instantly I requested a refund to try and send this drone back. It then took the seller about two days in order to acknowledge the return request. Along with that came a postage label, which said £3.20. Now, I've sent things on eBay before, and nothing's ever really cost £3.20, especially a high ticket item like a drone. So I did a little bit of research, went online, went to the post office website, and to send such a thing back, it was gonna cost me around about 30 pounds. So I thought, why not go on to DPD, the people who delivered the drone, to see if they could be any cheaper. £51 to send back a parcel, £51. Now, after a little bit of research, I figured out that they have a distribution warehouse where they're working out of about 30 minutes away in the car. So I've given it to him. So my drone's been put in a lapse of the god, so they're gonna take it and they're gonna scan it in. And that's what he told me. I've got a photograph of it. Uh, and since that, since I dropped it off, for some reason, my, uh, my flip out screen and my camera stopped working. So at this point, I felt like I'd lost my drone. I lost the faith in the eBay seller and my camera had stopped working as well. I had to drive away from the distribution center, pretty down on my luck. And that's at the point where I really just wanted to stop filming this vlog altogether. <sighs> I started to regret buying this drone, totally. So the drone saga continues today. We are now on like day four, day five. Yesterday we went to the distribution centre and dropped off the parcel, which you've seen already. And um, we've had still had no response via eBay messaging. I have messaged him to say that I've dropped the parcel off personally. I've also sent him a picture of the parcel in the door of the um, distribution centre. And there's just been absolutely zero communications with this eBay person. I mean, this is a business eBay person. This is not just like a single seller. They're like a big outfit. So this morning, after not receiving a single message back, I went onto the eBay app and started a conversation with the guys at eBay, just to try and get a leg up of where things are at. What you should have done is posted it. But we all know why I've not posted it, because it's like 50 quid. 51 pounds but the tracking side of it, you get a tracking number and that's what you need to be able to prove your postage. Because I haven't got that, they advised me to do these two things. Drive back to the distribution center, which is about half an hour in the car, ask for the parcel back and um, ask for the seller's details. And the words that they used was quite laughable. He um, told them that they have to. They have to give you a parcel back and they have to give you the seller's contact details. Have to. I don't know what world people live in, but people don't have to, do they? So anyway, so rather than driving up the motorway, uh, I decided to get in contact. So I'm now waiting for a phone call back. 
So the person at the distribution centre has got back to me to say that the parcel is now being processed and I will be receiving my refund. Refund? Refund? Um, later today. Let's see if that happens. I've now got a number for the centre, they found my parcel, so we're on the right track. But it doesn't get me a draw on any of this, does it? I'll have to see what happens next. After a few days of waiting around for some kind of reply from the seller, I got a response. That response said, once we receive the package in our warehouse, we will process the refund. And I was like, hang on a minute. Didn't I just mention in the previous message that I dropped off this parcel to the warehouse and I've actually sent you a photo? A few days later, I finally got the confirmation I was looking for. My refund was being processed. And while all this was going on, I managed to fix my camera and found a shop with a refurbished drone. So I took a short trip down the motorway once again, picked up this drone, brought it back, unboxed it. I am happy to say that this drone is absolutely amazing. It's got all the bits, the propellers and the batteries that I was looking for in the original drone. And the refund is back in the bank account. So after watching a tutorial by Jevon Dovey on how to fly my Air 2S, I thought it was time to take a flight on the local park. So once I figured out the controls, I wanted to get a few shots that I'd seen on YouTube. Things like active tracking and following the car. There are some pretty cool things you can do with a drone these days. After I figured out how to do some active tracking and got the shot I wanted, I thought to myself, it'd be a good opportunity to grab some aerial shots of the amazing Yorkshire countryside. And this is where it all went a bit wrong. Firstly, I did not think about the wind. Secondly, I didn't realize how cold it was. And third, once I'd set off, the light changed. I could no longer see the drone. So I quickly turned the drone around and had to look at the controls to try and find my way back. The thing is, I was now flying into the wind rather than away from the wind. And it was twice as hard for the drone to come back. The battery started failing rapidly. Plus, with the freezing weather, it just did not help the problem at all. To add to this, the controller started shouting at me to land. It's like, land the drone. Returning to home, we're gonna land now. The home point had not been set for where I set off with the car because I tried to do an active track shot. I could not see the drone. So I tried using the map to try and get me back on track. I literally spotted the road on the map and thought to myself, if I could just get this drone to the road, I might see it, I might just see it and be able to land it near the road. And there it was. Just like that, I could see it. It was there. I walked towards the drone and landed it at the side of the road. 8% battery remaining. It was only then when I picked up the drone I realised I probably had frostbite in my fingers. I literally hugged the drone and put my hands in my pockets because I felt like my fingers had gone numb and they were going to drop off. Now, even though this saga was a bit of an epic fail, some good did actually come of it. Firstly, I'm going to leave you with this, the drone footage. Now, if you didn't know this story, you might think I just grabbed some stock footage. I put up some epic music over the top. We both know that's not true. 
And secondly, I learned a few valuable lessons about drones. Always think about the weather conditions before you fly. Wind and cold can change your flight from fun to scary quite quickly. Losing the sight of your drone is easier than you think. Don't get overconfident trying to get epic cinematic shots. And lastly, always check on eBay before you buy something. You might be able to save unnecessary time messing about. Well, that's it from this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing for more videos. And I look forward to telling you more stories in another video. See you in the next one.